Congressman Thomas Massey from the 4th Congressional District, Congressman John Yarmouth from the 3rd Congressional District, Republican, Democrat, together again, <laughs> or together maybe here at KET uh, for the very first time, but just thought we would do a little uh, blog post uh, and not just talk to individually uh, about issues that uh, I'm going to talk to both of you about mm -hmm. on uh, uh, our one-to-one uh, -one program, but let's talk about politics. Let's talk about something that you're engaged in. Uh, Congressman Yarmouth, uh, Congressman Massey was just telling me a few minutes ago that he was in Iowa uh, doing some campaigning for Rand Paul, kind of, kind of described that uh, whole uh, aura that surrounds uh, what is what is Iowa. Have you ever, have you ever been out there doing I've the... never been to Iowa, and uh, it's, it's one of, I think, four or five states that I haven't been in. And, of course, I have very good friends from there, uh, Dave Loebsack and Bruce Braley, who's a former member now. Uh, so they keep bugging me to come up, and I'd love to do it, but... It's, I haven't it been was, there. It was on my bucket list. I hadn't <laughs> been there until then. But I did spend six years in New Hampshire, and um, it's, it's very similar. I mean, in those states, it becomes a fever pitch, and eventually you won't be able to go into a grocery store without bumping into a presidential candidate as it gets nearer and nearer to January, yeah. February. So you think next March is in Kentucky is going to be like that now? <laughs> I, I don't know if we'll get quite that much attention, but uh, it's certainly going to a caucus. I, I assume the... Democrats are going to stay with the primaries. Yes, right? we are staying okay. with the primary. So they've got two yeah. reasons to come to Kentucky. <laughs> That's right. So Shouldn't tell us what you the found there, uh, uh, Congressman Massey, uh, and, and uh, what what you might have been surprised uh, right. about with the the people who you saw and and that were there and and that maybe haven't quite decided yet. Well, first of all, I found a lot of corn, <laughs> in Iowa. Uh, probably more than Kentucky has. Uh, but what I noticed is a lot of people are undecided. You know, I thought they would already have formed their camps and their tribes. And, and before the event started, I did four events in one day for Senator Paul. He wasn't with me. I was a surrogate. But before the events started, I just went in, shook hands, and, and uh, talked to people one-on-one. -on -one. And what I realized is these, these weren't rallies for any particular candidate. People had two or three. You know, they had mm -hmm. them ranked. It's my first choice, and I, but I'm kind of leaning toward this one. I don't know about that one. They're, in, in Iowa, they're pretty smart. They're holding their cards and, and waiting to decide. Hmm. What do, do the both of you uh, think about this Donald Trump phenomenon? Well, I'm somewhat mystified by it, I must say. Uh, from a partisan perspective, I think it's wonderful. <laughs> I, I, don't, I want him to stick around because uh, he's, I think, I don't think he's electable in uh, the general election, and I think he obviously uh, has sucked all the air out of the room. Nobody can get traction while he's around. But I suspect that uh, my best analysis is that he represents um, a frustration with the dysfunction of the system and think that somehow because Trump is very self-confident and a powerful guy that he can shake things up. That's my off-handed analysis. Congressman Massey, in our discussion uh, before this, uh, uh, might have used disruption as a dysfunction, disruption. Um, but he's really tapped into a a feeling out there in the in America uh, from the crowds that he's drawing and from the interviews that I've seen that people are looking for not an insider but from somebody different. Uh, don't don't you is that is that the I, way to kind of put your thumb on it? I, I think so, and uh, I don't mean anything ill about your party to say <laughs> this, but I think if Donald Trump had gotten the Democrat primary and you had a 10-way race in the Democrat primary, that he could poll 20 or 30 percent there, too. I think you're right. I think you're right. And that's the point I make to a lot of people is, you know, about 27, 28 percent of the American voters <clears throat> self-identify as Republicans. He has a quarter of them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure there are 6, 7, 8 percent of the people who uh, feel the way um, those uh, supporters of his do. But uh, that's a long way from being elected president. You, you said he's not electable. I don't think he's electable, no. No. He's, I mean, he's, first of all, he's, uh, his standing with um, uh, minority communities is totally shot. Uh, he's already, I think, 60% of Republicans say they <clears throat> could never support him. So I, I just don't know where he has a path to, to win a general election and get 270 electoral votes. Congressman Massey, do you want to ask Congressman Yarmouth any questions about Joe Biden or Hillary Clinton <laughs> or, or Bernie Sanders? Yeah, yeah, let's just start with Bernie. What? Well, well, you know, my favorite's Rand Paul, who's on the Republican side. Who's your pick, John? 
Well, you know, um, you know that I like Rand a lot, and we yeah. get along really well. Uh, and I've been saying all along, it looks like I'm going to be proven wrong, that if, that if Jeb Bush is not the nominee, that Rand has as good a chance of being the nominee as anyone else. Maybe things will turn out that way. Uh, the two people I would be most comfortable with as president from the Republican side are John Kasich and Jeb Bush just from a kind of a philosophical perspective. Well, they'll get no Republican votes in Kentucky now, <laughs> thank you very much. That's right. <laughs> no, but on, on, the, on the Democrat side, are you with Hillary or? Well, you know, of the, of the four candidates who are announced on our side, uh, I think Hillary is the best qualified and, and would make the best president. Now, she has some issues that she's going to have to work through, and uh, unfortunately, I've made some national news recently uh, with comments that I thought were pretty obvious, that if she <laughs> broke the law, she would have a problem being elected. Uh, but, um, you know, Joe Biden is certainly someone, if he gets into the race, will shake the, shake the, the nomination process up. I have very, very warm, long-standing feelings for, for Joe Biden. I've known him since he came to the Senate in 1972, and I was a young staffer then. So... Uh, he would put a lot of Democrats in a difficult spot. And would Elizabeth Warren be a good running mate with him? I and mean, would that be a good ticket? I can't see her running for vice president. Hmm. Uh, I really can't. But uh, when they met the other day, that's the first time I actually believed that Joe Biden was going to do it. Um, I think that was very significant. And, of course, they leaked the meeting out, so they, they had a strategy involved there. Uh, I think she is very, very comfortable in her role in the Senate. I, I think the world of her, and uh, I think she wants to stay there. Well, the, uh, uh, the Obama White House uh, did not uh, do a lot to deter any of those thoughts. Uh, I mean, it, it was an endorsement, but uh, it was, um, I, I guess, in, in some ways, a statement that uh, supported uh, Joe Biden if he decides to do this. Yeah, and I saw some kind of a, a tweet or something today, a little brief mention that... Uh, there's a report that President Obama gave Biden his blessing to run. So, I saw that. so to, to both of you, we'll sort of end up on, uh, on Bernie Sanders, uh, who was a House member and, and now a, a Senate member, uh, at 73 years old, uh, former mayor of Burlington, Vermont, who is drawing uh, greater crowds than uh, Donald Trump uh, all across uh, the nation. So. Um, I'm always curious. Now I know there are 435 members, and you don't, you don't, you know, you don't bump into each other in the House or, or the Senate every single day. But well, Thomas and I do. Yeah, we did. <laughs> We're in the same office building too. <laughs> Have you ever um, had a one-on-one -on -one with Bernie Sanders, or do you know him? Have you met him? Have you seen him uh, act on uh, in the Senate? Or you know, I, I met Joe Biden, and that's uh, really I think the only candidate on the Democrat side that's running. He's a very affable guy. He is uh, in person, what you see yeah. on TV. Um, but uh, no, I've never met. Uh, Does Bernie, Bernie represent that um, that disruptive uh, candidate that you and I were talking about earlier? Well, you know, if it came down to a, a vote between Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders, I'd probably have to vote for the Donald. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think he is the disruptor on the on the Democrat side, and maybe uh, somebody that's. Uh, less concerned about what people think about his views, you know, yeah. and he's just the straight what he is. Have you ever well, met him? I've met him. I've been in a couple meetings with him. Oh. One actually here, and uh, he is uh, very passionate. He is uh, almost obsessive about the issues he cares about. Mm -hmm. He's um, uh, he, um, he's not like Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not a warm and fuzzy type. Uh, but one thing that he, and he's not a Democrat, by the way, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's not, just, he's not no, a registered yeah. Democrat, which is interesting. Uh, but the one thing that he's done so far is he has shown, I think, uh, everybody how to use social media more effectively. He's, his, hmm. his campaign has been extraordinary. That's how he's generating a lot of these enormous crowds. And so I think everybody needs to sit back and take note of... Uh, what he's doing, because I'm convinced that the world of politics is shifting dramatically, and that social media is going to be the is the number one way of communicating political messages these days, and it's it's not uh, commercials on television. Well, Congressman Thomas Massey and Congressman John Yarmuth, uh, uh, appreciate you participating in our political gab fest, uh, not only on <laughs> Bill's Eye blog but on uh, Periscope uh, live across uh, the Twitterverse. Uh, sure. We appreciate you coming in. Sure, thanks, that, John. Thomas, good to see you. Good to see you.